Hi, welcome everybody. Welcome to our session of Lakes and Lake Houses, the evolution of analytics in the cloud with AWS. My name is Raheem Bhojani, Senior Vice President at Dremio, responsible for engineering, product, and support. Prior to that, I spent eight years at Tableau and Microsoft. I'm very excited to host this fireside chat today. We will discuss how data lakes have been evolving, the capabilities required to build a modern data lake architecture, and how organizations turn data into strategic assets. But first, let me introduce to you Rajesh Sampath, GM Amazon S3 API Experiences. Rajesh, welcome to Subsurface Live. Could you please share a bit about yourself and your career journey? Absolutely, Rahim. Uh, very excited to be talking to you and our audience at uh, Subsurface Live. Uh, I'm Rajesh Sampath. I am the GM for S3's API Experience Organization. Um, I've been with uh, Amazon for uh, eight, more than eight years now. And uh, before that, I was with Microsoft for uh, eight years. And prior to that, I uh, worked for a number of uh, consulting uh, companies uh, based out of India. Uh, all my eight years have been uh, with S3. I've uh, worked on different parts of S3, uh, building some uh, core distributed systems, uh, contributing to uh, S3's uh, uh, key launches, such as uh, strong consistency and uh, encryption by default and uh, some of the security capabilities as well. So um, uh, as part of the uh, API experience for S3, um, uh, I am very interested in making our uh, data lakes and analytics customers succeed, continue to succeed on top of uh, S3. And um, as part of that, I'm really excited to be talking to you and our uh, audience here at Subsurface Line. Thank you very much for participating today. Let's start with talking about how, in your view, data lake architectures have been evolving. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really exciting to see uh, that uh, the whole uh, evolution of data lake architectures. And I would even go back to, uh, you know, uh, kind of correlating the relationship between data lake architecture evolution and the importance of data that we've seen over the recent years, right? Uh, I would assert that uh, you know, over these years, uh, data has grown in uh, tremendous uh, importance in terms of uh, driving business decisions, insights, and uh, to the point of becoming an asset for uh, businesses and customers. And uh, I can clearly see that as a correlation or as a result of evolution of these data lake architectures. Like, for example, uh, you know, uh, in the good old days uh, when we were uh, working on um, uh, you know, on-prem data warehouses. Um, and I'm sure uh, both of us must have worked at some point in time in our careers on these setups. Um, I uh, certainly had the uh, opportunity to work on one of those really large on-prem data warehouse. Those were really good at um, helping customers get targeted analytics or reporting or uh, inputs for decision-making. But at the end of the day, they were actually a data silo. You know, they were not able to, uh, you know, customers were not able to get the full value out of their data. And then, um, you know, on-prem Hadoop uh, uh, data lakes kind of helped customers get more insights and value out of their data because now they could process massive amounts of data on commodity hardware. And you uh, are a Hadoop expert uh, yourself as well, Raheem. So uh, you, uh, you understand what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, and you know that was a natural evolution because uh, data warehouses, while uh, great at getting started and and then solving immediate problems, you're hundred percent right. They created silos, um, and then the Hadoop infrastructure kind of grew out of that. But at the end of the day, that was still on-prem, and that still faced would face both scale challenges, but also in cases where you need uh, time to insight performance issues. Uh, and to unlock that, you need you needed the evolution of a cloud data lake. In the new modern sort of open data architecture yeah. nomenclature, a cloud data storage, something like S3 with the resilience and uh, performance characteristics uh, that are there is absolutely mandatory. I don't think you could do, uh, I don't think you could evolve data lakes to where they are today without that. Absolutely, totally true, actually. And then connecting back to the, the whole journey itself, Raheem, if you look at it, um, you know, these with uh, on-prem uh, Hadoop workloads, customers were not able to scale compute and uh, storage independent of each other because they were tightly coupled. They also had to do a lot of, uh, uh, you know, 
undifferentiated heavy lifting in terms of dealing with hardware failures, keeping software up to date, updating multiple applications concurrently or simultaneously. All of this resulted in customers spending a lot of their time on this undifferentiated heavy lifting where they could have been spending their time on things that um, would have really mattered a lot to their business on their core uh, domain specific decisions. That, now, that, that's yeah, exactly right. That's exactly right. And you have you have some customers that prefer that because of the type of data that they have. Um, but then they have to absorb that cost, right? Like the cloud object storage gives you the ability to uh, give the, get the experts to handle that part of that for you. And then you can focus on the business that you need to go serve because our customers at the end of the day are serving some end uh, business user. And it's really behooves us to support that rather than spending time on managing infrastructure. Absolutely. And you're right. I mean, uh, S3 is at the core of these architectures, right? Um, you know, S3 is the first largest and most performant object storage service and the storage service of choice to build a data lake. In fact, we are celebrating S3's 17th birthday on March 14th, Pi Day. Uh, we'll also be having an educational uh, streaming event on Twitch. And uh, you know, uh, today S3 holds uh, more than 280 trillion objects and serves over 100 million requests per second. Hundreds of thousands of data lakes are built on S3 um you know as you 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 called out uh rahim like a lot of household brands such as netflix airbnb pga tour expedia and ge are using amazon s3 to securely build and scale their data lakes and to discover business insights every minute uh, that's amazing to see um so given that you have we have all these big uh, companies that are establishing s3 as a standard for sort of the shared data assets, uh, as you may speak. What are some of the other things you may have noticed that have accelerated this, this sort of shift and this growth? Yeah, absolutely, Rahim. Uh, in my opinion, I mean, there's a number of factors that have uh, gone into this, um, you know, the exponential growth of data lakes on the cloud uh, driven by S3. But uh, if I can think of the top two or uh, three uh, factors, I can uh, boil them down to these, you know. Number one, um, I, I, first and foremost is in my mind, uh, customers have come to rely on S3 because of our relentless focus on fundamentals. S3's unique distributed architecture gives customers industry leading durability, availability, performance, and security at virtually unlimited scale. And this uh, you know, goes back to uh, the, con the, con the conversation we had earlier about uh, how Hadoop uh, customers can scale storage independent of uh, compute in the cloud. Right. And all of this happens at very low cost to customers. This means customers no longer have to worry about scaling, deploying storage, provisioning, or anything like that. We do all of that for you in the background. The second reason is with uh, S3, uh, you know, customers can process and analyze data in place with minimum data movement. You have like really big uh, customers um, run multiple concurrent and analytics workloads on top of the same data without having to copy the same data over and over again to different compute nodes. That is really powerful for uh, customers running large scale data lakes on top of S3. And the third thing is S3 continues to lead with innovations, improving security, data protection, and agility for data lake and analytics workloads. For example, um, uh, S3 object Lambda uh, helps customers perform data redaction operations at the source, at uh, very close to the data storage, so that multiple applications can use the data redaction capabilities without having to build point applications. We see customers use uh, S3 Object Lambda for, for example, removing uh, you know PII information or for doing some special processing of the data along the get path, or uh, you know customers using data lakes. When they want to give access to their data to multiple applications and with different permissions levels and whatnot can do so using s3 access points access points is another unique capability that allows data lake customers to provide targeted permissions to their applications without giving permissions at the bucket level okay. oh that's awesome like uh, and you know building on the, sort of the notion of the acceleration of these architectures 
this is a, personally for me a very exciting topic. So allow me allow me to geek out for a minute. You know, uh, as we discussed, then the data volumes as they've been increasing and the complexity of the data as it has been changing, uh, it naturally created a bottleneck with data warehouses because they couldn't scale fast enough. They could change, couldn't evolve schema fast enough. It was too much of an effort that way. In came Hadoop, and that that was somewhat successful. Uh, but but again, it still had the same scalability and silo effect uh, in, 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 because of the on-prem nature of it. Now, as we discussed, as you mentioned, this evolved into the decoupling of storage and compute. And the resilience and the performance uh, at, at massive scale uh, for S, a platform like S3 uh, allows Dremio to do what we've been doing. Right. We've been uh, a read-only, really fast engine prior to last year, but now with the evolution, which is the most exciting part in the last year of table formats, has made has allowed us to bring DML, time travel, uh, partition evolution, schema evolution capabilities to our customers. There's two main formats today, Delta Lake and Iceberg, that we see from our customers. Um, and speaking about iceberg it's a very open community and it's 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 a it was brought to the forefront for a few people from netflix and they created the, uh, the 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 definitions in the open community and it's been evolving really quickly what are your thoughts around some of these other trends uh, in aws uh, that you're seeing from your customers oh yeah i mean uh, uh, your color is very valid raheem like the uh, iceberg uh, evolution is really uh, exciting to see and uh, we see a lot of uh, customers adopt uh, these table formats, Iceberg, Delta Lake, uh, all of these are uh, you know, really uh, groundbreaking for customers. And we see that customers continue to uh, build these open formats on top of the uh, strong foundation that S3 provides uh, with uh, the operational fundamentals and the innovation that, I've, uh, that I spoke about. In terms of trends, Rahim, it's really interesting actually how, uh, as to how customers are demanding more from uh, you know S3 and uh, AWS in general, right? Uh, you know, first and foremost, uh, in this economic climate, uh, uh, customers uh, are looking for ways to uh, optimize their costs. They're looking for more transparency and more uh, cost optimization opportunities. Not so surprising, right? No. Uh, but you know, what we've done so far in S3 is like we continue to invest in cost optimization for our customers, and you know. Uh, S3 intelligent tiering and S3 storage lens are really great examples for uh, on how S3 has continued to innovate and pa pass on those cost savings to our customers. For example, um, let's talk about intelligent tiering for a moment. Intelligent tiering is the only cloud storage class that delivers automatic storage cost savings when data access patterns change without performance impact or operational overhead to our customers. Now, imagine being able to uh, select the storage class of your objects when you upload to S3 as intelligent tiering and S3 in the background automatically moving them to the appropriate storage class to optimize for storage costs and then passing on the cost benefits to our customers. Yeah. And like this itself has uh, uh, saved over $750 million for our customers wow. since the launch of intelligent tiering compared to S3 standard. And those savings continue to accumulate for our customers. Yeah, that's amazing. And then a storage lane lens is another innovation that uh, we delivered, um, which gives customers aggregate account level visibility into object storage usage, activity trends, and even actionable recommendations on cost optimization and data protection best practices. Storage lens provides a free version. Actually, I do I do look at uh, storage lens on my uh, you know developer account just to make sure I'm uh, doing the right things there. And uh, it is auto-enabled for every account. That's what I wanted to call out. And then uh, the optional paid version that you can upgrade to get 35 additional metrics, including identification of uh, cold or abandoned buckets or lifecycle rule counts or status codes for activities. On average, you know, with the additional metrics on the paid uh, storage lens uh, product, customers get six times more cost savings than the cost they paid for storage lens, which means they recuperate the cost and they also, um, you know, use these insights to make actionable, uh, 
take uh, the, the corresponding actions on cost optimizations or on uh, data protection best practices. So overall, uh, you know, this is the first trend that we're seeing in terms of cost. The second trend that we're seeing, uh, which is interesting, I think I'll be interested in your take on that as well, Rahim, is this move towards uh, a decentralized um, set of data lakes, interconnected data lakes, forming this data mesh architecture, mm -hmm. right? We spoke about data silos created by on-prem uh, uh, data warehouses. With the power of S3-backed cloud data lake modern architectures, you see customers move to this data mesh where individual lines of businesses can work on their individual data lakes and innovate faster. This gives them the agility and the ability to move fast with domain specific data. And when they need to inter interact with each other, they can exchange data across these data lakes, forming this true data mesh that really unlocks the potential of data for their customers. We see this in large enterprises where, um, you know, departments uh, such as marketing or finance or even legal and uh, sales can have in their own uh, data lakes running domain specific data uh, analytics jobs and then interconnected with each other with data exchanges or what we call as data products so that um, you know they can uh, get the value or share the value across these organization boundaries taking that concept further rahim it's it's really mind blowing to see how that concept has also uh, evolved uh, in in terms of scale customers are uh, seeing this value of uh, this data mesh architecture and uh, they are using this to share data across company or business boundaries. You know, um, for example, AWS Data Exchange. Uh, we announced a preview in uh, at reInvent last November, uh, which allows customers to uh, share their data sets or data products across uh, multiple organization boundaries, so that each uh, like everybody can benefit out of uh, data products coming from other organizations truly enabling data collaboration, data as a, smart, as a strategic asset. Now with data exchange, uh, the launch, the preview launch we announced in uh, reInvent last year, the advantage is data producers can use S3 as their uh, data source and enable multiple subscribers to get the data, to access the data without having to copy the data for every subscriber. This means this truly unlocks the potential of data products, data as assets, monetizable assets for customers, that is really groundbreaking. And AWS Data Exchange has seen a lot of customers use this for multiple data products. And uh, we are really excited about the adoption we got from the early preview. And this is the uh, the second trend that I wanted to wrap up with, you know. And I think it'll go back into the uh, the modern data lake architecture that, uh, you know, you folks are focusing on. Yeah. and. Uh... I I, uh, I want to give a plug to Storage Lens because I go tell my QA team I got a surprise bill of eleven thousand dollars per day, and I I need to go tell them about that technology because I, I don't want surprises like that. Uh, but going back to uh, going back to the data mesh concept, really, if I look at it from a business user end, most of my big enterprises now they, they have some kind of central CDO office, chief data officer office. And their job is to set policy. And their policy is usually around governance and, and scale and what's blessed and what's not blessed. Without this notion of having um, uh, data at the center, which S3 allows you to do, uh, you can't be successful that way. Um, because one of the downsides of self-service is proliferation of data assets. And then if you are the chief auditing officer, or you are the CFO, you want trails there. You want to be able to say, okay, they've been making the decisions on the freshest, most correct source. Right? And this is a constant push and pull between the business units and the infrastructure teams or sort of the chief data officer, the people that are responsible for the quality uh, and, and, and the auditability of these assets. So 100% agree with, with, your, with what you're saying with the trend is like this, from a, even from a business process perspective, this architecture is also coming alive now. Um, some of these big banks and big retailers, they also talk about mesh in this concept. And with Dremio, we take this a step further because in our product, we have the notion of a semantic layer built in. 
So not only do you have storage where data is at the center, with Remy, you can create views into that data, which give it a business meaning. And then you can connect all these things together, be it, uh, be it from an end user analyst perspective or from, uh, from sort of the chief data officer perspective. Uh, yeah, that's, that's true, actually. Please. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I mean, the way you connected those two concepts is really amazing. You know, uh, on one end, you have the agility uh, play. And on the other end, you have the, the need for governance. And when those two things come together, it's really powerful. You know, it, it's really uh, something, the dream that you would have had probably 10 years ago in terms of uh, these architectures. That's exactly right. Um, let's kind of talk about some of our joint customers and, and how what we're doing to, to help with them, uh, help them as an example. Uh, you know, this morning I was speaking to a European customer who is a trading, they're a trading platform and they're in the middle of a cloud migration. Uh, and their current storage platform is a S3 compliant de device. And that's step one for them to move to S3 proper. And what struck me is your deep partnership with these type of vendors allow these migrations to happen. Otherwise, in the old days, it would be a really heavy lift and shift. Um, do you have any sort of insight into how important these type of partnerships are? Uh, because they, in the end, it benefits a customer to move to sort of the modern architecture that we've been speaking about. Absolutely, Rahim. I think uh, in general, uh, when we look at these uh, uh, these data lake uh, workloads, right? Our goal is to help customers succeed. Like uh, you know, you and I in our previous conversations, we've spoken about time to uh, value for the data and time to get insights of the data, helping these customers get that time to uh, reduce the time to value of the data is super important. And, uh, you know, we work with uh, partners uh, both on the analytics side and on the on-prem storage side to help customers, uh, you know, quickly move, migrate their on-prem data lake workloads to the cloud so that they can get uh, the value of the data super quick, you know, we have, and then some of the innovations that we build along the way really help customers move that real fast. There are, um, if customers want, uh, uh, you know, other flavors of uh, AWS S3 for them to be, to build for the cloud in the future, we have uh, AWS for outposts and uh, S3 for outposts for customers to use in uh, those kind of uh, environments as well. And then we have the data ingestion capabilities through, uh, uh, you know, the Snow family of devices when customers want to ingest uh, huge amounts of data into S3. So, but overall, our uh, approach has been that we work with uh, AWS services for uh, helping customers, uh, uh, you know, with ingestion, with uh, building the architecture and analytics. And partners are a key aspect of that overall strategy as well. We work with multiple partners to help customers, uh, you know, find value, like reduce the time to value. Uh, for their data the, you know and this is really true also for native aws applications because i i spoke to uh, a startup that we are partnering with and uh, they do ml models for causality of data meaning uh, they try to reason out why something changed and how it's inter interrelated and they build their entire stack on the aws platform with arrows sort of in the middle of it to share and get and get the analytics portion of it um and you know their cto his comment was because we are built on a cloud platform like aws we don't actually have to worry about uh, the scale because the, their whole thing starts with ingestion right any model is only going to be as good as uh, the data that you feed it um and so they can take advantage of the cloud scale, but then also work in open source and, and, and so be transparent about the things that they're doing and how they're doing it. Um, what other sort of innovations uh, in closing, what other innovations you know, are, are you guys looking at from an S3 perspective that would benefit our common customers? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, like you called out, the uh, uh, some of the unique innovations we had brought into uh, the space. Uh, starting with uh, object lambda um, and um, uh, also talking about access points these uh, help customers uh, you know push more and more functionality into the storage layer and uh, pass on the benefit of those functionality to multiple applications that are accessing the data another thing that i wanted to mention in this case was like uh, sd select which helps customers push sql predicates or filtering clauses 
into the uh, in, into the S3 storage layer. So then multiple customer applications can take advantage of that. So that's another uh, thing that uh, we've seen multiple customers use for uh, you know accelerating the performance of their queries in some cases as well. Like we've seen customers get up to four uh, four hundred percent uh, throughput improvements on their uh, on their query performance. Overall, I think uh, in terms of uh, uh, innovations and uh, it, it, overall in the in the whole uh, setup itself, we're looking at this as storage being the uh, the gravity, the center of all this uh, data lakes, and pushing for governance capabilities, pushing for uh, such as access points and uh, uh, you know block public access or uh, you know default uh, ACL behaviors and what default behaviors where you disable ACLs and uh, pushing for a lot of innovations on helping customers improve the performance of their data lake workloads. These are the ways in which we are looking at innovating and we will continue to uh, you know, raise the bar on these kind of things. We work with multiple partners such as uh, Dremio and uh, first party AWS services to pass on these benefits to our customers so that when they uh, make their choice, they have all these capabilities available for them on irrespective of the, the technology or the tools they use to get value out of the data. I'm really excited to hear about uh, these innovations, particularly for us. You know, we have a saying, if queries are slow, it costs customers money. And things like S3 Select would really, it would be really a big benefit uh, to our customers. So with that, let me close by thanking you, Rajesh, uh, for your time today and the dialogue. Uh, uh, me personally, and I'm sure our, the, our listeners are going to very much appreciate it. Um, there, there, please, uh, there's on demand, there's a session for best practices for building and operating a lake house on Amazon S3. Please be sure to attend and watch it. There's also a AWS virtual booth that you can go and learn about all these things that we discussed. Uh, thank you very much for attending and listening to this session and Subsurface Live. Have a good day, everybody.